Let's begin with Jared Kushner, President Trump's son-in-law, White House senior advisor, and guy who always looks like he thinks you just fought it. <laughs> Despite his important role in the administration, Kushner rarely does on-camera interviews, and this weekend, we found out why. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, mm -hmm. uh, she calls... She has called President Trump a racist. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen him say or do anything that you would describe as racist or bigoted? So, uh, the answer is uh, uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, you can't not be a racist for 69 years, then run for president and be a racist. Was birtherism racist? Um, look, I wasn't really involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Um, look, I know who the president is, and I have not seen anything in him that is racist. So, again, I was not involved in that. Did you wish he didn't do that? Uh, like I said, I was not involved in that. That was a long time ago. Well, that's an interesting way to think of racism. You can only identify it if you see it firsthand. Was slavery racist? I don't know, man. I wasn't there, okay? <laughs> I just heard good things. I wasn't there. I mean, if Jared's rule is that he can't comment on something he hasn't witnessed firsthand, then there must be all sorts of things he can never talk about, like dinosaurs or... or the female orgasm. <laughs> but... But still, it is refreshing that Jared didn't just lie the way Kellyanne Conway or Sarah Huckabee Sanders would. Yeah. Cos, you know, if one of them got asked that question, they would have been like, no, Trump wasn't racist for birtherism. Obama was racist for being born in Kenya. <laughs> But, like, seriously, how is Jared so bad at lying? You know, he's around Trump all the time. <laughs> you, you would think that he would practice. That's like working the night shift at Waffle House and not knowing how to throw a punch. You're gonna get knocked out. <laughs> Moving on. As you know, the Democratic Party now has a record 24 people running for president. 24. At this point, forget the primaries. We can just solve this with a royal rumble. And because most of their policies are the same, some of the Democrats have decided to switch things up to try and make a splash. More than a dozen 2020 candidates were in California this weekend for the state's Democratic convention. And the boos rained down on some of them when they dared to criticize ideas like socialism and Medicare for all. Medicare for all may sound good. But it's actually not good policy, nor is it good politics. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If we want to beat Donald Trump and achieve big progressive goals, socialism is not the answer. I was reelected. I was reelected in a purple state. You know, what's funny is the crowd's not booing. They're just saying, who are you? <laughs> who? Who? <laughs> but yes, this event did not go well for Hickenlooper and Delaney. Uh, in fact, it was a disaster. Uh, I mean, do you know how unpopular you have to be to have Trump in a sentence, but people are booing you? <laughs> Forget Trump, you! <laughs> this is one of the moments where they're lucky that nobody actually knows who they are. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, if I was John Hickenlooper and said something no one liked, I would just say I'm another candidate, yeah. <laughs> Once the crowd starts booing, I'd be like, that's right, you heard it from me, Tim Ryan. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. If you hate me, vote for John Hickenlooper. <laughs> Moving on to some breaking news from the world of entertainment. Hip-hop legend Jay-Z is now big pimping on another level. Well, Justin, Jay-Z is hip-hop's first billionaire. Forbes announcing that this morning, the magazine looked at rapper's entire portfolio, including his music, his investments, and his art collection. Congratulations, Jay-Z. From hustling on the corner to having $1,000 million. Yeah, it must feel great. The only downside is, this is his new squad. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where you're rolling. That's who you're with. And because he's a billionaire, forget Nas, now Jay-Z has got beef with Bernie Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be like, he's got 99 problems, and the 99% would like their share of those problems. <laughs> it's time to break up Jay-Z and Beyonce like they're the big banks. <laughs> and I, I, like, I'm happy for Jay-Z, but at the same time, I feel bad for him. Cos if you're a black person, and Forbes announces that you have a billion dollars, best believe you're about to get a billion long-lost cousins. <laughs> like, if I got a billion dollars, 
and they just announced it. People in Africa would lose their shit. I'd be getting phone calls every day from random Africans just on the phone. They'd be like, uh, hello, Trevor, it's me, your cousin, Barry. Uh, hello? <laughs> I'd be like, Barack? I thought you said you were born in Hawaii. He'd be like, uh, look, uh, I wasn't really involved in that. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> so, uh... So, yeah, this is a big day. Jay-Z is officially a billionaire, and he's married to Beyonce. But is he truly happy? <laughs> yes, of course he is. <laughs> he's happier than you'll ever be.